I'm Samantha Butler. I'm a principal clinical scientist at the Birmingham Women's Hospital. I have over 18 years experience in the field of genetics. I originally trained down in London after obtaining a genetics degree. My role in the um, whole process of whole genome sequencing when it comes to working the, with the multidisciplinary team is actually to help with the patient sample, so taking the patient sample through the laboratory processes and then to the interpretation and then it's the actual interpretation side that we then take to the multidisciplinary team. On a day-to-day -day basis I interact with a number of people so I'd interact with the bioinformaticians to ensure that the correct pipelines actually developed for the patients for their samples um, to look at the right panels of genes that we want to analyse. I'd then work with other scientists in my own field to interpret the data and also bring in the knowledge of the genetic counsellors, other medical consultants as well to then formulate the patient report. I'm Maria Bitnaglinjic and I'm Professor of Clinical and Molecular Genetics at UCL and Great Ormond Street Hospital. A clinical geneticist works as part of a multidisciplinary genetics team but also in a wider context with many other specialists throughout the hospital. So we're often seeing patients who've been seen by colleagues either in neurology or cardiology or audiology because they think that the patient might have a genetic condition underlying their problems. And our role is to try and pull together all the various pieces of information, whether it's tests, the clinical histories, and to try and work out whether we think the condition is genetic and what the diagnosis might be. And this is often quite a, a long process and quite a difficult process for all of the professionals concerned. My name's Sarisha Hesketh and I work as a clinical bioinformatician in the Oxford Medical Regional Genetics Laboratory. A clinical bioinformatician works in a clinical NHS laboratory um, to process particular types of sequence data on behalf of patients and their clinicians. The type of data we're talking about is simply too large to inspect by eye and so the traditional methods of looking at this data simply don't apply new discipline has emerged by which uh, someone with a background in software engineering, computer programming and infrastructure is able to take this data and use a combination of open source tools that are already available and custom scripts to tie these things together to produce something called a software pipeline which processes the data from the start, transforms it through a number of steps and produces something that a clinical scientist can then look at by eye and decide whether or not a particular variant exists in a patient. When it comes to analysing the data, there are lots of questions around uh, things to do with incidental findings. So it could be that we found something in a gene that gives particular susceptibility to breast cancer or a heart condition, and it may be that the patient has already told us that they don't want to see that data, they, they simply don't want to know. They're only interested in the phenotype, uh, the disease that their clinician has referred them for. And so um, as a bioinformatician, my role would be to ensure that um, having uh, received this information about what the patient has hasn't consented for to mask these particular areas of the genome so that um, at that particular time the patient would never see this information. My name is Peter Marks, I'm a consultant genetic counsellor at the West Midlands Genetic Service based in Birmingham. It's never an easy job to explain what we do but I find it helps to break it into the two words actually. So genetic, we discuss genetic risk and try to clarify genetic risk for patients and their families and then the counselling aspect is though we're not technically counsellors we do use counselling skills to help to try to explain complex genetic risk information and also to help patients um, and their families to support them in coming to terms with what's often complex and potentially life-changing information. I think whenever we forge multidisciplinary uh, relationships with colleagues and the communication is key and this is something that patients often um, tell us is really important in their care that they feel um, their care is better when health professionals are communicating well with each other. Mm -hmm.